What's up, everybody? It's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio12 Tutorials, pick up your premium membership. It is 50 cents a day. And don't forget to stop by CMPKits.com. That's right, guys. I have two websites one for tutorials, one for kits. Crazy. Stop by CMP Kits, get yourself a copy of Drill Mini, get yourself a copy of Drill Loops Volume 1 and 2, and please get to work now i would also like you guys if you could shoot me a follow on ig spicy sundays podcast and if you need to get in touch with me real quick dm at craftmaster3 on ig is the absolute positive fastest way to get that done now today we're going to be looking at something that i hope is going to help you as much as it helped me and that is working with um working with pipeline inside of studio 1 along with uh along with the um apollo interfaces right so i've been dealing with this thing with uh with pipeline where Anytime I, I I have used pipeline, it would kind of it would kind of double the signal. Um, let me show you let me show you what what that's about. I'll just I'll just show you real quick. So inside, if you guys have if you guys have Apollo, um, you'll you, th this will look um, familiar to you, right? So whenever I uh, this is the console app. Whenever I get to um, whenever I get to try to use pipeline and say I want to use it on the entire track as I do because a lot of like what I do for mastering is happening not in a plugin. Um, I, it sounds like this. And the way that and the way that I would remedy that would would be I would work on it by turn by muting the main and then you know, try, you know, trying to make my adjustments like that. But I mean, that's bullshit, right? Like I should, like, this is <laughs> to this <laughs> in a, an Apollo X4 is, um, it's costly. You know what I mean? I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to do that. Right. So I would, you know, I go around and, and, and I do, and, and this is my cautionary tale for all you guys. Like do, when you get into a situation with your gear, don't, dm me about it don't dm youtubers about it don't dm people that are in the comments of your favorite youtubers don't hit people up on discord just go 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 to the standard documentation right so i i mean dude i asked people and I had been asking about this and I had been asking about this, this for, um, and I'm pretty sure this would have saved me knowing this would have saved me from, from buying another interface to begin with. Cause I bought two interfaces since I got rid of my, my studio 192, which I liked. I really liked that interface. And I think I was having the same issue, but I mean, I asked everybody, dude, bro, I asked the dude who made the, the, the damn videos for Presonus about pipeline and nobody thought to give me this and this is why you go this is why you go to the documentation right and if and if you ever and if you ever ask me a question and um and i tell you to do, to go to the documentation like don't don't look at it like i'm blowing you off because because this is where you find this stuff so if i go so if i go to um ua support and i type in uh let me see uh, hardware insert right it brings up and that's and this is also a reason why it's good to know what things are actually called instead of like instead of like, uh, you know, like FL Studio vocabulary, because when you need to search for help, you could actually find it. Right. So so using hardware inserts on, on an Apollo Twin USB. Do I have an Apollo Twin USB? No, I don't. I have an Apollo X4. But you know what? I'll bet it's the same thing. Now, when I looked at this, the console setup. Uh, I looked at this, and I didn't freak out. I was like, all right, maybe, you know, maybe this is a little dated. This has changed. This is what the Q outputs look like. You guys know if you have Apollo Q outputs don't, don't look like that anymore. Um, 
and then as I was going down, they d- they did it a little bit differently. Like they're they're utilizing a uh, a, a virtual track inside of the DAW or inside the console, and um, I I chose not to do that. But right here, this right here, bro, this jumped out and it made so much sense. And I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so I'm so thick, bro. Like if I would have instead of muting this, if I was muting the console app that would have made that would have gotten rid of the problem so i went ahead and tried it go in here mute you guys heard what it sounded like before now and i had done that i had done that previously but because i didn't see any signal here what i had assumed um kind of foolishly was if there wasn't any signal here I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to get any signal out of the actual out of the actual DAW. Well, um, that is not the case because because what I did, if you guys if you guys go to my SoundCloud and you look up and you look up the song Hialeah, bro, it's the last it's the last thing that I uploaded. Um, you will hear this. You will hear this sound this song. And it's and it's a direct bounce with with Pipeline being the first plugin on my mix bus right so how do you set this up how do you you know how do you how do you how do you make this template work for your apollo right well the first thing that you're going to want to do uh whether you're using the duo or whether you're using the x4 um the duo you might have to use the virtual channels i don't know i don't know how many like how many inputs and outputs you guys got sorry i don't have it so I, i i haven't done the math on it but what I have right here is analog one. What this is, this is uh, this is one cable. This is um, this is my microphone, right? Uh, ISA one. This is this is input two. Okay, mic mic input, and this is tied. This is a mono channel for for my mono effects, and it's being pushed by a, by a Focusrite ISA one, right? Then I have what's called Zulu in, and what this is is this is a stereo pair right? These are two channels linked, right? This is, this is analog three and analog four. Let me relink them. And what this is, is this is coming in from my, uh, from my warm audio, uh, 273 preamp. And these, and this is basically all of like, uh, any, a- anything that goes through my effects chain, uh, the, uh, the, you, you know, the Dwarmer 1974, the, uh, the SP, the, uh, the SP 404, you know, uh, pretty much anything that comes out stereo out of my patch bay it back into the doll, um, is going through this loop, right? So it's important. It's very important that you have this. <coughs> It's very important that you mind your IO matrix, right? So this is going to be, so this is going to be first. You want to make sure that, um, you know, your, your inputs are enabled. Okay. And then everything that I'm not really using, I like to just go, I I like to go and get rid of it and make it easy. And all you got to do to do that is, is click on something once. And then if you're not using it, select none and it'll just, and it'll just make it offline. Right. So I get rid of, so I get rid of all the junk that I'm not really using. I've kept, uh, I've kept like four virtual channels in case I need them. The other, you know, the other five, six, seven, eight, they're not being, they're not being uh, used right now. And then the, the most important thing you want to make sure is that your line one, line two, line three, and line four, that these are, that these are all white, right? And what'll happen to you is if you have, is if you have these assigned to Q mixes, which, which some of the, which some of the standard templates inside of, um, <clears throat> inside of the console will do, what you'll see is those will be grayed out and you won't be able to send to them, right? So that'll, dri- <laughs> so that'll drive you crazy. So, Make sure that you have make sure you have those unclicked. Okay, you wanna you wanna make sure that that you're looking like that, all right. And then setting up pipeline is super easy. Now, what I did in my console, I don't I don't want to look at a whole bunch of channels that I'm not using. These are these these are the four channels that I'm gonna that I'm gonna be able to to record in on 
inside of, you know, inside of this setup. And I don't want to see anything else. So what I did was I hit all those other channels and I've just have my mic. I have, uh, you know, I have my focus right in and then I've got, um, you know, and then I've got my Zulu chain, right? Boom. So once you get, once you have that down and you're inside studio one, you go to pipeline and you want to go to, you want to go to your, uh, to your in and out matrix. And you want to, you want to just, you just want to clean everything up, right? So main and listen bus, that'll, that'll come up, uh, you know, a st standard stock. Then these will all have different names. And what I did is I just, is I just renamed them, right? So these are my outputs. So on line one and two, I don't have anything hooked up to line one and two, right? I can still send stuff out of line one and two. So I just have it labeled line one and two. Um, HW send, hardware send. Now hardware send is two, you know, is two, uh, is two, is two quarter inch cables that are going out of the physical outputs, right? Of line three and four. Like, like we're lined up on the matrix line, line three and four. And out of there, I can jack into my patch bay and then go through, you know, whatever effects combination, uh, that I see fit. So I relabeled it hardware send. Then the mono version of each one of those is labeled, you know, to coincide with the left and right. Um, same thing with line one and two. I have that I, I have that labeled uh, to coincide with line one and two. And to add a channel, all you got to do is click this. It'll add it, double click on it, rename it. Right. So that's there. Um, you want to make sure on your input side that you have your inputs. So, you know, you've got Apollo, uh, Apollo one and two. This is this is a stereo pair, Apollo one. Um, and even now, let me just let, uh, I'll uh, take the extra step and I'll clean it up a little bit more. Right. So this is this is my mic. Right. And then I know, I know Apollo two, this is the ISA one. And then, and then the input right here, this is going to be hardware return, right? Because this is the signal returning from all my hardware. Boom. All right. And then, and then what you, what you can do once you have a, you know, once you have everything named the way that you like, um, you can go ahead and export this. And say, I have this, I have, you know, you could, you could say whatever you want. Uh, UAD Thunderbolt that works for me. We'll call it UAD Thunderbolt. And anytime, anytime you come up to this matrix and it isn't saved in a new session or something, all you have to do is go to import and then, and then it'll be, you know, it'll be in there. Boom. Right. So I've got, so I've, I've got a couple different ones that, that I've went through. Um, I call this Apollo final form because I finally figured it out, but that's really all there is to it. Once you have, once you have that set up and the most important thing, guys, the most important thing with these, with these stupid console, you know, mixing, mixing plugins is, or, or um, applications is that if you're going to use pipeline, pipeline is going to take the place is going to take the place of this so what you have to do is you have to mute these channels you'll still be able to hear it inside the DAW it'll still record inside the DAW it'll still bounce outside of the DAW you just won't see the signal here and then once you have that you are good to go so this is CMP with Craftmaster Productions this was a revelation to me I hope you guys that are using hardware find this useful you guys keep it simple don't be basic and we'll see you on the next one.